Hey folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to Let's Try Surviving the Aftermath, the just announced base building survival -y game from Paradox. Um, where, yeah, something, something terrible has happened in the world. Um, most of it's been destroyed, everything is bad, but you and a handful of little survivors are trying to rebuild and remake a life in this uh, horrible hellscape that is uh, what's left over of the Earth over here. Now, I am recording this before I go to ParadoxCon. ParadoxCon is where this game is being announced, and is also where I'm gonna have a chance to talk to the developers and ask a bunch of questions and things like that. So there's going to be things probably at this point that you guys know that I don't know as I'm recording this one here. But uh, you know, ho hopefully we'll, we'll do our best and uh, not not, uh, not not make too many assumptions and things that are going to turn out to be incorrect. I'll do my best. Let's go ahead and jump into a new game here. I'm going to leave the tutorial messages off. I have uh, dabbled around with it a little bit. And here's our game setup screen, which is kind of nifty. Um, so if you're if you've played Surviving Mars, which Despite the similarity in the title, there's not that much in common between Surviving Mars and this, but the um, the idea of sort of tuning your setup and having the, like, the difficulty meter over here is, uh, is definitely going to feel a little bit familiar, which is really cool. So we're going to have a series of questions here that you can see are going to affect the uh, what the game considers to be the difficulty of things. So, starting off with the environment. There are only few who remember that spark that started it all. A chain reaction of global catastrophes wiped out most of the planet's population and maybe made people turn against each other. Those who are left must now survive the aftermath in this post-apocalyptic world. So, we can say either cities are demolished but nature prevailed, which leaves a fair amount of fertile soil. Also, this is the prettiest looking map. Um, because there's going to be a lot of greenery and trees and things like that all over on the map, and uh, it looks very nice. You know, the world is desolate and unforgiving, so here we have much less soil fertility, and the temperature and humidity isn't as good. And then finally, the planet is a barren wasteland. Hot and dry climate, uh, and no fertile soil. So nice and hard and difficult. Um, this will lead to the least interesting of the maps because, well, it is so barren. Um, I feel like what I'm going to, I want to go with things being pretty hard, but I think what I might do, I'll go sort of middle of the road here. The world is desolate and unforgiving. It'll still be a pretty barren map, but at least there'll be some green spots for us to look at and be like, hmm, the world used to be pretty once. Catastrophe. Slowly but surely, modern civilizations crumbled as catastrophes kept swooping across the continents. Cities were destroyed and the planet itself suffered permanent damage. So what, what's interesting about here is they're very, like, they're kind of vague about what exactly ruined the world. And you get the sense that it was, like, multiple overlapping things. Um, it does feel like there was some sort of meteor storm that, uh, you know, so, or maybe, you know, just one giant asteroid that then broke up and, and, you know, sort of wiped out a bunch of stuff on the planet, but also nukes? I don't know, we kind of did a little bit of everything. Um, so yeah, the worst has passed, time to rebuild. It's still a dangerous world, but will prevail, or it feels like the apocalypse never ended. So this will affect the frequency of catastrophes, as well as how much nuclear contamination is over the map. You know what, let's just go for the hardest at this point. It's gonna be fine. Resources. Everyone has their breaking point. Eventually, it's not enough to just just to survive through the day. People need hope, and there finally is some. It has been a long road to get here, but that which was before can now be left in the past. So, what do we start with? Um, we could start. So, we were in a bunker. It did collapse. So, we've, you know, forced out of the uh, out of the bunker, the fallout shelter, perhaps, and we've got plenty of resources. There will also actually be a bunker on the map. Um, uh, on the map screen that we start off with, which has the resources stored in it and we can salvage and things. Trusted car finally broke down. Presum I haven't tried this one yet, but presumably you'll actually start with like a van or something on the map with some resources. And then after walking for ages, this is where they stop. Scar scarce starting resources. Um, I'm gonna do this one because, you know, hard is fun. Uh, but it is kind of cool that you like, on this one here, you'd actually start with, you could see like they have that old, that old shelter, that old bunker on the map and you sort of start your town around it which i think thematically is very 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 strong but yeah let's go let's go h hard over here um our survivors the people around you are the thin red line which keeps the group alive they are far from perfect but everyone has made it this far 
You can trust them with your life, and they trust you with theirs. So do we start with hardened individuals who will thrive in the world? That would be eight adults, four children. Or a band of survivors able to care for themselves, seven adults, three children, or a group of ambiguous misfits, only six adults and two children. A lot fewer workers to go around. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with that, sure. Challenge. These survivors will face challenges both large and small, some caused by bandits, others because of their own actions. There are also other societies in the world that won't hesitate to strike back if you look at them the wrong way. So we want some challenges are expected, numerous challenges are assured, or insurmountable challenges face you. So we'll do that. It's the apocalypse. So exploration, world exploration is gonna be hard uh, with lots of uh, difficult bandits out there. Sure, gatekeeper. Life is unfair, but sometimes it feels like you are not alone, whether it's an invisible guardian or just pure fate, but it sure feels like someone's watching over us. The path is challenging, but worth the risk. It's a tough road to walk, but never unfair, or suffering or success. So this, I believe, is gonna affect a lot of the events that are gonna happen at our gate. We have a gate guarding our settlement, um, and I think this is gonna help to tweak the difficulty and frequency of some of the events that happen there. Sure, let's do it. And we got ourselves the ability to pick a flag. Um, I don't know, we'll uh, we'll take the fiery anvil. Uh, no, you know what, the red flag like that is gonna be good. Um, so 94% difficulty, if on environment, if we'd pick the uh, toughest environment, we'd be at 100%, but that's gonna be okay. Um, colony name is going to be Petra. Oops, try to spell it a little bit cleaner there. Uh, and our colony model it, motto is going to be what could possibly... I don't know how m many characters I've got here. Go wrong. There we go. Perfect. And then we get a nice summary over here. Boom. So yeah, we have a decent environment, but uh, everything else is about as bad as it can go. Uh, survivors, weirdos, criminals, oddballs. Excellent. I love it. Do, do, do. That's my target audience. Post-apocalypse world is harsh and people will die. Don't let it demoralize you. Yeah, it's fine. People die all the time. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. I like how the gate's just made out of, like, literally anything you can find. Whatever you got, go for it. Okay, and here we are in the game. I'll give it a quick little pause here so we can just uh, take a look at the screen. Uh, so, again, so we've got some green patches here and some trees. Um, because of the terrain settings, we went, eh, it's not too bad. It's not, it's not too bad, green re-rise. But there we go. So we've got our people here, and these are all, like, the boxes, and you can see backpacks over here. See that? This is just what we were carrying. Um, and then we stopped. We couldn't go any further, so we just stopped here. So again, this would be replaced with either a vehicle or big, like, bunker things, depending on our initial startup. Uh, we set up an initial food storage spot over here and a stockpile. We've got a number of people on base. Here's Oliver here, uh, who's currently idling. He's got no workplace, and he's also homeless. Very not good. Good health currently. Uh, not very happy, but, you know, this could be worse. Um, and he does have access to tools and clothing currently. And we have some to spare over here. If you run out of tools, then you won't work as fast. So you're going to want to go ahead and do some more of those. And yep, yeah, clothing, protection against the elements, keeps you good and healthy. So up at top, we've got our average colony happiness. Here we've, we've got our colonists. We know we've got eight colonists, six of which are currently carriers. Carriers are basically people which are not assigned to an actual workplace. Um, but... Um, uh, but we're still going to do things because they're going to move resources around. They'll go collect stuff in the wilderness if we assign jobs for doing that sort of thing. So they're sort of your jack of all trades. Uh, you definitely need some carriers to be active in your base all the time. Uh, because if this gets zero, things won't move around and everything will come to a crawl. So, um, you know, you don't, you don't want everyone sort of quote unquote employed, I guess, in the conventional sense. This is how much food we've got. This is our water sort of balance. We do have some water stored up right now, but we are going to run low unless we build a well, so we want to do that. Energy production, we actually need to research some technology before we can start producing power again. So right now it's at zero. We've got some planks, a little concrete, uh, a little plastic, a little metal. We have no fiber, no parts, no components, no electronics, no fun box. Uh, and yeah, some tools, some clothes, no medicine, and then science points over here for our research. This little bug icon is just because this is a very early pre-release build. Um, super duper early, so we can report bugs and things in there or give feedback to whatever. Um, 
Okay, let's go ahead and unpause the game and set up some initial tasks over here. So certainly we've got some homelessness. Let's try to deal with that right away. We've got our build menu over here. There's a bunch of different categories for all kinds of different things you can construct. And of course, we'll be unlocking more of this with technology. Uh, I'm going to start, I'm going to plop down a, uh, just a dirt road here because that will help our people move a little faster. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Needs no resources. So I will do people, it will, you know, require a little bit of work to do. So we've got eight homeless people. We can build tents, they fit two each. We can do emergency shelters, there's six. As far as I know, I think the tents and the emergency shelters are more or less equivalent in terms of uh, how good and comfortable they are. So uh, we'll just go for the shelter for now. That's gonna be okay. We'll put it here in this corner. And notice I couldn't build it here because there is some nuclear waste over here. Gets in the way and is just overall quite nasty. And we're gonna have to clean that up later. We'll actually need technology for that. Now, this is not gonna be enough to make all of our people not be homeless because um, we have eight people in total. We could build a tent to finish it up, but I think I'm gonna build another emergency shelter. Um, because it'll give us a little bit of room to grow. So we'll go something like that. That's going to be okay. Now, what we can do with our little um, uh, food storage areas, we actually have the ability to set a work area for these storage buildings. So when I've got the food storage, you can see there's some highlighted stuff over here. We've got some berry bushes out of there. So if I go and move the work area over here, my idle... Um, uh, what do they call them? Carriers will go and collect resources and bring them back. And I can actually um, control and scroll with the mouse wheel here and in big in this area just to make sure these three berry bushes will go in there. So we'll put it like that. And then people who are idle will go and walk out there, collect some berries and bring them back to the food storage area. Stockpile over here. This is for raw resources. Same sort of thing can happen. So if I set a work area and maybe cover over here. We've got little bits of plank. We've got a little bit of concrete over here. So some of our early material will come from that. Obviously, we'll be clearing out the room or the the map. Um, so it's not a forever thing, but it's gonna it's gonna work for now. So first emergency shelter is done. Health of the building is good right now, and some colonists are in there. So we still have a couple of homeless people, but not anymore. There we go. Second shelter has been built. Lovely. We have a little bit of rain. Hopefully, it's not too toxic. Next stage of survival might be getting some food. Oh, and water. We still have negative water going on over here. So let's do that. We'll go to water. Uh, so we can have water tower for more storage, but we need water production right now. So water well will appear to make 12 water production, which will put us positive. So let's build a well. Oh, can't be placed on barren soil. So we have to put it on some green soil. So we'll put it right there. That sounds okay to me. Get that built up. And then let's go and put down some more little dirt roads here. You know, apparently people can move a little faster along them, but also it just, it just looks good to sort of get things kind of organized, you know? Uh, yeah, we'll just skirt around this. It's going to be fine. They don't need to be square blocks or anything like that. Have a little angly bits, and that's going to be okay. Um, let's concern ourselves with food production at this point, because that's going to be the next thing. So we've got, at the start of the game, we've got three different sources of food. We can have a trapper set up so um, that there can be some hunting. There, there is going to be a little bit of wildlife uh, out around here. Um, I think we may have seen some running around already. I'm not sure. Uh, you could also consider fishing in these little ponds. But I don't know. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up these small fields over here to start off with. Just a couple of fields. And I'll go to the top edge of the green area. We'll set one up there. Oh, should have held shift so that I can, you know, keep plopping it down. But I am going to start with only two and we'll get them built. There you go. We've got a well, so we've got positive water. Most likely we'll get another one fairly soon because we will start to need more water. Uh, it's right now, the consumption is just on a per colonist basis, but there might be other things that need water. I don't know if the, um, the fields will. Yeah, we'll have to check the consumption of these fields to see if that's what they need. Okay, so we'll have housing, we'll have food. Now, these will have permanent job slots. I think they have one job slot each, so that will reduce the amount of carriers we've got. Those children will eventually grow up so that they can... Um, they can produce a little bit more work, which is going to be nice. Uh, every day in this game, you can probably think of it as almost more like, well, not quite a season, but some, some amount of time. Let's fast forward because we need to get more done in this video. So here's our gate as well. 
to be able to oh there we go on our crops we do need to set what you've got i'm gonna get one of these growing corn which grows fairly quickly but has low yield i'm gonna get the other one to grow potatoes which grows less quickly but gives us more yield and hopefully there'll be enough and yeah so one job slot on each one of these um so now we only have four carriers left over so the carriers again are going to keep collecting resources in these circles as well as haul things around for construction and whatnot so this gate to be able to go out into the world and wander the area outside of just our settlement we have to get a functional gate set up this is also going to let us um, interact with you know various people that might come over so we'll set this up. It's going to use a fair amount of materials to do it, but it's going to be okay. Well, insufficient materials right now. We are going to be collecting some um, just with our little stockpile work area going on. Um, what are we actually going to be short on? We're going to be short on plastics. Okay. Well, let's go and set up. Um, what is it that I'm looking for? Right here. A recycler so recycler will go through various junk piles and get plastic and fiber let's do that and actually while we're at it we'll set up a scrapper as well which works about the same we'll set them both up in town um, let me go and you know what? I'm gonna cancel the construction here for now I could have just put low priority but I want to make sure if there had been any resources occupied I want to clear it up because I want people to work on these things ASAP. We'll really be short on workers, because we're going to have one each here to get it working. It could actually support two each. Enough material for the scrapper. It keeps coming and going. I think we are collecting the material, but just kind of slowly. And it's mostly concrete. I don't know if we've got concrete in this radius. A little bit over there. There's a bunch more concrete there. I suppose I could move it. Maybe I will move the area a little bit. There we go. I could make it really tiny and just focus on the concrete area, just to get that to prioritize. But you see, we're out of planks anyway. We need we need planks and concrete, so we're just going to have to wait until more resources are collected, and that's okay. But yeah, I'm, I'm okay. That, I'm happy that we waited on the gate. Let's get this going first. Speed three. Days progressing. No disaster yet, thank goodness. Shelters are okay. There you go. Just hauling things back and forth. Mm -hmm. I click on you. Yeah, there's a detailed info. I don't think I'd ever clicked on this. Uh, you have mutations? Extra padding. Yeah, I've got some of that too, buddy. Don't worry about it. Uh, being homeless and alone didn't offer much protection against dangers, both old and new. So, mutations made easier to gather and preserve fat. 20% cold resistance. Picture of health. Their body is a temple. well respected in peak condition. Max health, 20%. Faster injury recovery. Condition, happiness. No happiness, uh -huh. yeah. Uh... Ethan, genetic lottery, blessed with remarkable genes. Faster injury recovery. Mm -hmm. What do I have over here? Nora. Oh, Hermit! New survivor groups cause anxiety. Happiness penalty when survivors join the colony. Boo. Currently happy due to no new arrivals. And you've got picture of health as well. All right, lots of traits. I like that. Make people feel a little bit more interesting and alive. Yeah, we have no medicine. That'd be nice. Okay. So we've completed the recycler. The recycler needs a work area as well. Now, unlike the storage things over here, because at some point in the game, presumably, these you'll have cleared everything on the map and these things will be idle. On the, on the colony map, I should say. But here, this really does need something to work to be useful because it's not just a storage thing. So what we're going to do is give you work area over here at the little plastic dump. And now maybe what I could have done is built the recycler closer to the plastic thing to minimize a little bit of walking. But I don't think it's going to end up being that much. Okay, so now plastics and fibers are going to get produced over here. And over here, we're going to have metal and I think that's parts. Yeah, that's a slightly different icon. Unless that's something else, but I'm not sure what that is. But anyway, we're going to get some production of pings. And yeah, you can see there's a second job slot over here, but we don't have enough people to spare. We're down to only two carriers. So now that this is being produced, I think it's fair to go and say, I'm going to work on the gate again. And if we'd started with a bunker, we would have started with like way more resources right away. So we wouldn't have to worry about um, being a bit bottlenecked by collecting resources as well as these bits over here. Because so we probably would have enough to get started a little bit more aggressively early on. We go that concrete pile. That small one is done, but we're still getting a few planks and then the concrete ruins over here. 
And yeah, you're just waiting for resources, mostly some concrete, well, and some planks. That is going to be a little slower without as many carriers here. But I think that's going to be... That's going to, everything's fine, basically. This is where we need to be. There you go, production. Oh, um, okay, this is fine. So the stockpile here carries various raw resources. If we look at storage here, the stockpile... Um, Raw resources and construction material. Doesn't store food or more delicate resources and can collect things. There's also the warehouse, which stores tools, clothing, meds, and so on. Um, I, which I think is fine. If we were to build the t -t 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 tailor and tool shed, we would really need a warehouse for this because the tools and the clothing um, wouldn't get carried to just the stockpile, have to get carried to a warehouse. The stuff we've got right now is, I think, yeah, still sitting in these pile of boxes over here. So we're still good for for now there, but we can't add more stuff to it. So eventually this will just, you know, be empty and we can just salvage it to remove it from, from our screen. All right, good and good. And then over here... Oh, you have all the material. Excellent. Hey, hey! Because as soon as this goes, we can start exploring the world map, which is like the second part of this game. Part one is just, you know, a little, little survival thing. Oh, we don't even have a little roads done. It's because we don't have enough carriers. But we should get some extra colonists, I think, right away when we finish the gate. I think that's sort of fixed as a first event. Yeah. Or not. Wandering Merchant actually happened. For Look at this guy. He's got some style. A lone van rattles towards the gate, suspension creaking under the heavy load. Greetings and salutations, my good people, shouts the driver. Can I interest you fine gents and ladies with a bit of bartering on this loveliest of days? So, unfortunately, we don't have the metal or berries or potatoes to do these trades. What else you got? Yeah, unfortunately, I can't trade with you. I don't have the resources. Some other time then, fellow gents and ladies, don't be a stranger. The merchant stuffs his samples back to the van and climbs on the driver's seat, rattling into the distance. Okie dokie. There we go. This is the event I was expecting. Uh, so, we've got some new survivors. are seeking shelter. Can you let us in? We won't harm you, we promise. Come on, don't be shy. So... Sounds a little foreboding. Um, we're going to have two adults, no children. They're going to bring a little bit of resources with them. In addition to the survivors over here, we're also going to get a specialist, Scrappa, over here. Scrappa seems to always be functioning just below his breaking point. Such recklessness would be a death wish if his mind wasn't just as overcharged as his body. So far, fighting has been the only way for him to let off steam and avoid becoming a jittery mess. So the specialist is going to be what we use to explore the world map with. And they come with all kinds of different stats. Um, Scrapper here, specialty fighter. Indeed, the attack is his best stat. Decent scavenging. He's got some recovery speed as well. Not very good at exploration, which is a bit unfortunate because this gives him more action points. He's also not particularly good at... Um, well, he can scavenge okay, actually. Not so much research. Anyway, we're certainly going to accept over here. So, we now have 10 colonists which gives us an extra couple of carriers, which is great. And then we're being notified uh, over here on the world map, there's an exclamation mark. If we click on this, we now have Scrappa on the world map, ready to wander around. So he has five action points, which determines basically how far he can go, um, as well as what he can do with his time. What we could do, we've got this first little area we've explored, we know what's here. The rest we don't, we could send the scout one of these. That's fine. The other thing we can do is there's a little, um, there's a little shack over here. Oh, an old farm, and it's got some jerky in it. 33 units of jerky, which is food, which we could probably use some more early on. So rather than start by scouting around, um, I'm going to go and send Scrapper over here to scavenge. So it's got 33 jerky. He's going to be able to get 20 in this one action, which is pretty good. That's because he does have a decent scavenging skill. So he's going to do that. And now if we look, he's got 20 um, uh, jerky in his inventory. And yeah, there's 13 left over here. So he's out of action points. What we have to do is we have to wait for some time to pass. I think the tutorial said something like half a day, and then it'll refresh his action points, if I recall correctly. Of course, everything here is subject to change. It's still early version of the game. Uh, there could be a million bugs, and heck, they might decide to change everything. For all you know, by release, this is going to be a pony-themed renaissance painting simulator game. Okay, it probably won't quite go that far, but, you know, again, things can change. All right. Resource depleted over here. I think you still have things within your zone. We well, you still have the concrete. I might, uh, there we go. If I shuffle it like this, we've got concrete and planks in there. So keep collecting. We're not consuming any of those right now, but we're going to want to build more stuff up. Hell, if we get some more survivors in here, we're going to uh, need some extra shelters at some point. You're doing that. 
and you're doing that and that's all okay and yeah we don't have any science production going on and actually i don't know how, what the science production situation is going to be like in this game but i do know that you can get science and research out in the world by exploring and that's what we're going to get some of our science points um, so if we, if we keep exploring the world, we're actually going to find some sites with some research points available for us. So then we'll be able to unlock some technology and get things rock and rolling a little bit better. Since I do have some spare people, oops, there we go, specialist ready for action, action points reset. So we'll take Scrappa over here and we'll get you to scavenge the rest of the jerky. And then probably what I'll do next time he wakes up is I will send him to back into Petra to drop off the jerky because it's fairly close and then we'll send him off to explore. I think that's a pretty good idea. Berries depleted over there. We still have berries though, right? If I click on the food building, well, there's still one little patch. Oh, it's virtually done. So we'll have to wait until that last patch gets cleared and then we'll move the collection area for the food storage somewhere else uh, just to try to maintain food. Yeah, and water has gone down a little bit. I think I'm gonna preemptively go and build another water well um, there you go. This doesn't look like they overlap each other, so we'll put it there. Oh, we have our first infection! Ethan! Major disease is causing continuous health loss and penalties to the colonists' effectiveness. Untreated infections lead to death. Antibiotics will speed up healing considerably. Infected colonists consume twice as the amount of water as normal colonists. Well, let's make sure to get ourselves a medical tent set up. And you know what? I will put it down here sort of on the gate side, you know, maybe if we get more survivors that come in and they're injured or sick, they can get looked at right away over here. Okay. Get that set up. Presumably, we should have all the resources we need. I think so. Oh, we've got an event. Colonists want to talk. A couple of your colonists have spotted some sort of vehicle stuck down a deep crevasse. Crevice. It might still have some useful stuff left inside, but climbing down without proper gear will be dangerous. They want to try it nonetheless, claiming it will surely be worth the effort. So we can say no or let them try. If you say no, generally it makes people unhappy because you like told them no. So we'll let them try. Ah, one from the group is lowered down. An old four x four truck is precariously wedged between two rocks, teetering from one side to another, but the climber insists it's safe to continue. As the passenger door is yanked open, one of the rocks gives in and the entire vehicle tilts and falls, hitting the climber painfully on the way down. The loot is gone for good, but at least no lives were lost. So there's like random outcomes that can happen over here. And I believe possibly our difficulty settings affects how likely that we get various outcomes, but. Uh, so we have an injury. It's a good thing. We are building a medical tent over here. Uh, or, oh, yeah, he's injured. So we'll try to get the, um, we'll try to get those those injuries and those diseases treated as quickly as possible. Let's go back up to uh, maximum speed over here. We'll probably do for a disaster soon. All right, Oliver. So I'm gonna send you to Petra. And there you go. You have emptied your your resources. You have nothing in your your storage anymore. And yeah, let's go south and pop the map down here. See what we can see. Ooh. A manufacturer with some tools available. No hazards, no danger. All right, that's good. So I'll have to wait for him to get some action points again, because scouting, uh, as far as I know, consumes all action points just by doing it. So, you know, fair enough. Uh, okay, the well is completed. I may have wanted to put the priority up on the medical tent above the well. But it's getting built now. It's going to be fine. And since we do have 200 people, what I might do is put, is assign two people the medical task right away. I'll tell you what, I'll do that, and then what I might do is is then fire one and put them back to a carrier. But yeah, let's have a couple people working the tent. There go, one occupant. Just to try to... Because these people have been sitting around sort of infected and injured for a little longer than I'd be comfortable with, especially the infection. So yeah. Uh, food tent, you need to be reassigned. There's lots of food over here, so go and collect that. And you're still collecting concrete over here. Oh no, it's empty. Um, let me actually pull you back over here. We'll collect the rest of these little planks that are just lying around. Specialist is ready again. Uh, well, yeah, let's go and collect the tools. We're here. Why not? Oh, it looks like one salv salvage job is all we're going to need. Yeah, it's down to zero. Okay. I may not send Scrappa back to Petra right away, because we do actually have some tools in storage right now. I think our, our, our new survivor group, I think, had come with a few extra tools, which is good. Um... So we'll probably have him continue to explore around for a bit longer and just come come back home with a larger supply of stuff. Oh, are we are we getting corn? Yeah, we are harvesting corn. 
potatoes are still waiting. You can do an early uh, harvest as well. That's okay. You can see the uh, the harvest now count is going down as it's consuming this stuff. We do actually have a good amount of food. I mean, it helps, of course, that we are still collecting food off the map. Oh, colonist wants to talk. Two colonists approach you with sparkly eyes. An old landfill has been found, probably by stench. It's not too far from here, although the smell is absolutely awful. It might have kept scavengers away from there until now, and valuable stuff might still lie among the waste. An expedition might prove lucrative, but most definitely dangerous without any equipment. An extra layer of clothing and a set of tools will go a long way to keeping the colonists safe and efficient. So we'll have to use, send them with two tools and two clothing. If everything goes well, they'll come back with the tools and clothing, plus, you know, other stuff. But it could go badly. If we just if we don't send them any stuff, it's more likely to go badly, but we haven't wasted... No, nah, we'll, we'll give them the permission and the equipment. Two colonists return, smelling more foul than you ever thought possible. The expedition hit a few snags along the way, and one of them, rather unsurprisingly, caught some sort of disease. They didn't come back entirely empty-handed, but both are visibly disappointed by their haul. So we did end up losing tools and clothing. We got 12 plastic and lost a... Or got a colonist infected. Well... Darn. So we are out of extra clothing and down to two extra tools, and that is it. Um, we kind of need a few more. Yeah, let's see, lowering clothing. I was just about to say, we kind of need a few more things. I'll build, I'll start a tailor. Maybe we can live without the tool shop for a little bit longer. We don't have much in the way of uh, carriers. Although, what I'm going to do is I will get rid of one person from the medical tent over here. Clear that up, and then one person can go and work in the tailor and just keep a clothes supply going on. All right, scrap up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you over here. We'll do a bit of a wider circle around the camp and then come back. All right, we got some lawns. We'll probably salvage that while we're here. It'd be nice if we got another visit of survivors with another specialist. Now, sometimes the survivors show up, you know, just some extra survivors, that's it. Um, and they, they can show up without a specialist, but hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get another Another couple, maybe, would be really nice and speedy. I think in the test game I played earlier, um, I'd gotten up to four, and it was like I was just ripping through the world map really quickly. And all the uh, all the specialists have, well, a specialty. There we go. Taylor is done. So we're going to be taking fiber and making clothing out of it. Ah, but this clothing will not go anywhere right now. We need to make sure to build an appropriate storage. We need a warehouse for that. Otherwise, it won't go anywhere because they won't carry the clothing into the pile of boxes. Actually, the pile of boxes is empty, so we'll salvage it just to get out of the way so that we uh, we can use that space for something else. But yeah, we'll need a warehouse to store the clothing because otherwise it's just going to sit here. It'll even, it'll I think it'll even count as part of our resource count here, but then you'll start seeing people that don't have any clothing on them because it's just, they, they don't have a warehouse to go to. Um, yeah, I'll come down here and start collecting planks. Ooh, we're going to get 40 in one shot. I'll have to do it a second time if I want to pick up the last eight. And I, I probably do because I'm because I'm here. I mean, in a sense, salvaging only eight's not very action efficient. But on the other hand, making another trip out here later for eight more planks would be kind of silly. So I think I think we'll just go ahead and, and do the second pickup. Stockpile. Uh, speaking of planks, I was going to say we're pretty low, but we are collecting some planks over here still. So that's okay. And then the food storage is doing that. And then, yeah, the warehouse will finish. <gasps> There's our first ne negative event. The horizon starts turning from blue to toxic green, and the air seems to burn your lungs. These are the first signs of impending danger. Intense radiation is a constant threat, with both colonists and crops withering and dying during a nuclear fallout. New seeds cannot be planted before it's over. Severe cases of radiation, sickness, and thirst take their toll on everyone. So while the nuclear fallout is coming, harvest... We Oh, it's not even so. We should harvest our crops before they wither, because they will. Uh, stockpile iodine pills to treat radiation sickness quickly. We have no ability to make iodine pills currently. Build more medic tents or assign more workers to existing ones to help those who are in need. So probably what'll happen, so we've got a warning two days before the catastrophe strikes. What'll probably happen once the catastrophe hits, we'll just make sure we've got a second medic assigned to the medical tent. And hopefully we can treat radiation sickness sort of quickly um, and reliably enough to prevent an issue from happening. Yeah, low on clothing. See here, we've got clothing in storage here, but no one is actually going to be able to access it. Hmm. Pushing through a circle of people, you notice two colonists brawling on the ground. They both stand up upon your arrival and go into accusing each other. One had apparently spent the entire day harassing the other, who finally snapped and threw the first punch. Both are now bruised and bleeding. So we could give them both medicine, but I don't have any. Could let them fight. 
I think I'm gonna punish the instigator, you know? You're gonna bug people until they snap? Deal with it. You lay the blame on the one who instigated the fight, claiming they should know better not to pester someone in a time where we should all stick together. Part of the crowd disagrees with their decision and blames the aggressor instead. Two colonists are injured while they were fighting. And we have a minus one happiness to the colony. Boo! Boo! All right, the gate, yeah, here's the jerky that we collected before, which is nice. And it does count as part of our food supply. There you go. Mouse over this, see what we got. We are producing a good amount of food right now. Although I think this is like food produced within the last X. So, you know, it's bursty food production. Um, world map, right. Yeah, go ahead and get the last of the logs. Actually, you know, I'm gonna end this video shortly. Let me go over here, see if we can find a bandit camp to highlight that. Hey, there's one, perfect, hey, hey. Uh, so some of these camps are going to be guarded by various bandits. Um, and bandits have an attack and a defense rating. You can see here it's a 12 and a 3. And if we compare that to Scrapper, who's got an attack of 5 and a defense of 1, you'd be like, oh man, that, that is impossible. We can't possibly deal with that. Now, admittedly, the 12 and 3 is actually, that's pretty bad news. But if you mouse over here, you can see that hit point wise, the bandits only have 7 HP. And Scrapper has 100. So Scrapper is going to take a fair amount of damage fighting these bandits here um, and it will probably take multiple turns to uh, to ultimately clear this camp but Scrappa should be able to do it without dying and I mean I can attack a few times right like you attack we deal damage to each other we'll see where it is next time my action points come up I can attack again we each take damage we can see where it is and if it's just too much I can be like you know what no I, I won't do it maybe I can come back later with a specialist who's got maybe superior combat skills or something like that um, and you can heal your specialist by sending back to town, which is something I'm going to do anyway to get my resources in play. So, there you go. There's a quick little look at uh, surviving the aftermath. Uh, again, I'm playing this before PDXCon. PDXCon is where it's being announced. This is still super very early pre-release access mega beta stuff um, with lots of things potentially changing. Uh, I don't think I've run into... I don't think I've run into any bugs or crashes or anything that I've noticed. But, you know, there's probably all kinds of other tweaks that people are still planning on making to this game. Um, probably there'll be some info down in the doobly-doo about where you can get the game and more information and stuff like that. Again, um, I'm having to record this before I travel. So at the time I'm recording this, I don't have all the info uh, that I will by the time the video goes live. Um, there might be a little follow-up video to this, actually sort of maybe from Berlin or something. We'll see how it goes. Uh, so folks, thanks for watching, and I'm gonna see you guys next time. Smack, smack, punch. Well, that's not bad. Okay, we did two points of damage. But look at this, we took 18. <laughs> All right, see you next time. Bye-bye.